We were in Cheyenne Mountain and we actually heard uh, one or two events that were occurring and we heard initially that there was a small aviation airplane that hit one of the towers in New York City. Hey, this does not look like a, a general aviation kind of attack. And, and then again, we saw in real time the second aircraft hit the second tower and we knew that, uh, that it was not just a normal uh, day, if you will. It wasn't just a normal general aviation episode. I think prior to 9-11, we really focused on that external threat, really going back to the roots of NORAD uh, against the Soviet Union and a threat that potentially could be uh, threatening both the U.S. and Canada externally. 9-11 uh, showed us that we also need to be looking at that threat that could come from us, could come from us uh, internally. At that particular time, we only had seven locations that had fighters on alert and the alert capabilities back then, we really didn't even fly with live missiles on the aircraft. And so we had to make some modifications to our standard uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures. And we were doing that as we went along. So on day one, the first thing that we started to do is trying to get access to as many fighter and command and control and tanker aircraft that we could to be able to flood the skies with a counter capability in case there was uh, additional attacks that were forthcoming. Operation Noble Eagle is our air sovereignty mission within NORAD. Uh, this really came out of 9-11. In fact, U.S. NORTHCOM was born out of 9-11. Uh, that U U.S. Uh, Geographic Combatant Command called U.S. NORTHCOM was a direct result of the attack and the need to have a single commander that was responsible for home and defense. 